Greetings, I'm Bob Langer, welcoming you to another segment of Looted Art. Kurt Valentin was born in Berlin in 1902. In 1936, he joined the Buchholz Gallery, dealing in art. As Jews are only allowed to leave Germany with 10 Reichsmarks, despite Valentin being Jewish, he leaves Germany with 10 cases of stolen art, receiving special permission to go abroad to open up an art dealership in New York through the sales of this art, with monies earned through the works, repatriating monies back to Germany for the German war effort. Valentin is one of three dealers allowed to leave Germany under those conditions. He sets up an art gallery on West 46th Street as a result of a long-time relationship between him and Alfred Barr, a curator at the Museum of Modern Art. Valentin sells to Barr artwork for Barr's personal use and for the MoMA in New York. E.M. Wahlberg, who's on the board of MoMA, lends money to Valentin for his gallery. And the gallery being so successful moves to even larger quarters on East 57th Street, receiving even more stolen goods from Germany and repatriating even more money back to Germany to support their war effort. Sales of these stolen art are made to a curator, Hilary Rebay, of the Museum of Non-Objective Paintings, which is a forerunner to the Guggenheim in New York. Rebe and Barr are alleged to have purchased these stolen works at below market prices. And it should be noted that some of these stolen works are still in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art and the Guggenheim. That's works by Klee and of George Gross. In addition, the relationship between Barr, Rebe, and Valentine was so strong that Barr sent trustees of MoMA to Valentin's gallery to buy the stolen art. When Valentin applied for U.S. citizenship, Barr supported his application for what Barr considered his good character, despite documents alleging how Valentin bought Nazi looted art from Lucerne, Switzerland for Valentin's shop. Meanwhile, in 2009, the heirs of George Gross suited MoMA in U.S. federal court, only to lose their case. Not because they didn't have proof that the works were stolen, but because the statute of limitation had run out. One of the claims made before the courts and denied was that compensation should have been paid to artists or to the collectors from, who the, from whom these works were stolen. Three of the paintings were the, the poet Max Hermann Nice, done in 27, portrait of a model painted in 1928, and a watercolor Republican Ottoman done in 1920. MoMA claimed that they had proper titles to the works. If a sales slip by an individual alleged to be a Nazi collaborator was of good title, then the museums had a good defense. However, it was the statute of limitations by which the defendants had won their case. The courts, however, did not consider the allegations that the gross painting Herman Nice was stolen by a Charlotte Wielder, a German agent who later became a curator for the Karajin Institute in Pittsburgh after she had left Berlin for New York in 1939. Allegations followed her that she was also a Nazi collaborator, repatriating funds back to Germany to support the German war effort. One of Wilder's clients, a Paul Westheimer, had to flee Germany ahead of the Nazis and gave his entire collection to Wilder. After the war, Wilder refused to return any of his works, many of which he had already sold. The close associations between looted art making its way into U.S. collections and U.S. museums continued. In fact, it was Alfred Barr, the curator of MoMA, who bought paintings of Gross from Wilder for the museum in 1952. The general approach by MoMA and other museums, including the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, was to drag potential claimants into court to resolve disputes of provenance, rather than trying to privately settle these disputes through binding arbitration. In other words, they were attempting to wear out the plaintiffs 
many of whom were already in their late 80s. They did succeed in wearing them out. It should be noted that Bill Donovan of the OSS, which was a forerunner to the Central Intelligence Agency, listed Valentin as a German agent involved in espionage. In 1944, Valentin's shop was closed for his reasons of trading with the enemy, but reopened after the war, where he con continued selling to many more museums, with one of his clients being a member of the Rockefeller family. Valentin died in 54, 1954, and his works were sold to Park Bernay, which was later to become Sotheby's. His assistant joined the Otto Gerson Gallery, which later was to become the Marlboro, Marlboro Gerson Galleries in New York. When the Alfred Flecktime Gallery was taken over by the Nazis in 1938, a deal was made with the Nazis to go to New York to open a gallery to sell works of Otto Dix. The deal was made just prior to orders being given for he and his wife to be sent to a concentration camp. Flecktime developed gangrene in both legs and left for London. Before he set sail for New York, he died, and his wife, sometime after being told by the Nazis that she was headed for a concentration camp, committed suicide. In 1937, the, the Nazis confiscated 17,000 works of art from museums and burned 4,000 of these artworks in, in front of the central fire station in Berlin. 13,000 were untorched. 7,000 of these works were sent to Lucerne, Switzerland to raise money for the German war effort. These works included paintings by Brock, Chagall, Gauguin, Klee, Matisse, Modigliani and Madrian. At an auction in Switzerland, Joseph Pulitzer Jr. participated in the, in the bidding for these stolen paintings. Maurice Werth Wertheim, a wealthy banker, bought a self-portrait of Gauguin for $40,000, which work still hangs in the Fogg Museum at Harvard University. There are a number of U.S. museums where allegations have been made of their holdings of stolen art. Some of these museums include the Brooklyn Museum, the Cleveland Museum, the Fine Arts Museum in San Francisco, Houston, Boston, the Fogg Museum, Metropolitan Museum of Art, MoMA, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, Princeton University Museum, the Smithsonian Institution, the Solomon Guggenheim Museum, the Institute of Chicago, the Frick Collection, the J. Paul Getty Collection, the Jewish Museum, museums at Yale, the Norton Simon Museum in Pasadena. Several very famous cases include the Nazi stolen portrait of Adele Block Bauer from a wealthy Jewish family in Austria, where the Nazis sold the portrait by Klimt. The heir enlisted the aid of the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust, took the, took the case to the Supreme Court of Austria where the Austrian government agreed to return the stolen painting. It now hangs in the Neu Museum in New York, where Maria Altman sold her painting for $130 million. In another case brought before the Supreme Court in 2011, artwork done by Louis Cranach, which hung in the Norton Simon Museum in Pasadena since 1970, stolen by the Nazis, from the dealer Jacques Gulsteiger continues to hang today in the museum because the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that inasmuch as the statute of limitations had expired, they refused to hear the case. In retrospect, during Adolf Hitler's 12-year rule in Runation, there are reports that 650,000 artworks, including furniture and antiques, were stolen by the Nazis. Almost 68 years after the war's end, the Holocaust Claim Study Program has a database of 70,000 works which are still being sought by owners. However, a vast majority of dealers, museums, and governments have ignored or have failed to find a just or fair solution for the victims and their heirs. The co-chair of the Commission of Looted Art in Europe has stated that most countries have not checked the provenance of their artwork 
or have made their records available or have set up any transparent claim procedures. Claimants are at the mercy of individual museums or governments or dealers with no certainty or predictability as to how their claims will be treated. Countries such as Russia, Hungary, France, Italy, Spain, as well as some Scandinavian countries are among those which have failed to abide by signatory commitments to investigate claims of looted art. In Hungary, the Herzog family has been trying since 1989 to have returned to them works by El Greco, Renoir, and Monet, all of which now hang in the Hungarian National Gallery and Museum of Fine Arts. In Sweden, the Moderna Mazet has been accused of delayed tactics because they claim to have no system and no criteria for the return of any looted art in their galleries. Switzerland has rejected claims for the re return of, new, of, of looted art by Munch, Chagall, and Matisse. However, it should be noted that German museums have returned more than 1,000 objects of art looted under Hitler. As this seemingly effortless claim continues, heirs die, memories disappear, and those remaining with any hope to recover lost works of art, stone, stolen from relatives, live on dreams vanishing into nightmares, being supported by the uncaring, the greedy, and those still harboring their feelings for a return to the past. I'm Bob Langer. Thank you very much for joining me. We look forward to the opportunity of meeting with you again on another segment of Antiques, Art, and Valuables. Thank you all for watching.